Okay, thank you. So I would like to welcome Elspeth here on the stage and looking forward to your talk. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so what I would like to present today is um, to give some information about the, the mapping work that we've been doing as part of the, the Tadbig MIDS task group. <clears throat> and next slide, please. Oh, can I use this? Is this working? Um, so the the MIDS, the minimum, minimum information about a digitized specimen is a digitized uh, digi digitization standard <clears throat> that's been developed to measure, primarily to measure and monitor um, digitization. The different levels of the MIDS standard um, reflect the development of the digital specimen um, through the digitization process. So um, in common digitization processes, the, um, the data captured um, are, are, are captured in management systems, and they're then um, mapped to the aggregators such as GBIF or GeoCase um, using um, the Tadwick standards such as um, Darwin Core um, or ABCD. And I'm noticing I've got um, Darwin coffee. This is obviously when I needed some coffee. <laughs> Um, okay, so the information elements within each of the MIDS levels um, have been proposed and, and that's been result of fairly extensive discussions. Um, and they've also taken into account the, the digitization that's already been carried out um, and the, the, the terms that have already been prioritized by um, institutional and national digitization programs. <laughs> They're also um, a pragmatic solution, given the existing TADWIC standards that are available to be used. So um, when we come to the mapping, I was interested to see some of the talks that we've just had, um, because this refers directly to, to, I think, Hannah's talk as well. Um, so when we've been doing the mapping, we've been using the Simple Knowledge Organization System, um, SCOS, um, which means that we can capture some information about the mapping as well. So whether, um, as we heard earlier, things could be um, an exact match or a broad match or a narrow match, um, the main ones that we've been using. So you can see an example here of how this can also be visualized. Um, and this is what we've been using and visualizing for the MIDS information elements and the mapping. So if we take one of the elements just to kind of talk you through what this looks like in practice. Um, if we look at the MIDS information element organization, um, this is one that's um, at the uh, very basic level. It's included in MIDS level zero. Um, and what we can see here is when we map it to the Darwin core standard, we can see it maps broadly to three Darwin core terms. <clears throat> and that's the institution code, the owner institution code, and the institution ID. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so then, um, if we then look at mapping to ABCD, um, ABCD is is really particularly important for some of the earth sciences. So it was it was one of the priorities for for the mapping as well. Um, and we can look and see that organisation broadly matches. Um, the source institution ID and the unit owner organization yeah. good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's really helpful. Um, We've also been mapping to Latimer Core. And obviously this is with the understanding that this is still a draft um, schema and that um, <laughs> um, it's not yet been ratified. But what we can see here is our organization narrowly matches the um, organizational unit, um, which is a more general term in the Latimer core. And then finally, we've mapped to the schema.org org, um, where we found an exact match for organization. So therefore we adopted that term rather than creating a new term, we've just adopted the, if we find an exact match, we can adopt that term. So that's the, that's the 
um, label that we've used for, for the MIDS. So when we pull all of that together, we get um, the visualization of the, of the mapping to the various TADWIC standards. Um, and we also can include uh, an example. This is um, um, as, a, as a member. Um, this is one of the GR cycle records. So then we've extended this um, to the simple standard for sharing ontological mappings, the SSOM that was mentioned earlier. Um, and this is really the critically important part for the implementation um, because it's machine readable and it allows that, that implementation, implementation to take place. And much of this mapping has been done by um, Sam Leiflang that we heard, um, Matthias Dillon um, at Mesa Botanic Garden, and um, David Fishmuller, who um, is here today. So very grateful for all of that work that they've been doing. So I want to show two case studies um, to show the implementation of the, of the mapping um, and the calculation of MIDS using the mapping. So the case study, uh, one is the Mesa Botanic Garden. Um, and this shows the um, use of the MIDS calculator that's been developed by um, Dylan. Um, and the data um, downloaded from GBIF for Mesa Botanic Garden show what, be, what can be achieved. Obviously, this is kind of a high level because these are data from Mesa, and they, they're the people who've been developing the calculator. So we would expect this to be kind of a high standard. Um, the MIDS calculator um, has been developed to be flexible and um, easy to use. Um, and that's been really important because the MIDS um, um, information elements have been changing over time. So having that flexibility has been super helpful. And here in this example, I've updated the, the default um, calculator um, settings, the MIDS criteria, to uh, based on the current um, mappings. And we can see from, from MESA that they have um, high level, as I said, this was expected. They've got high level at MIDS level one and a significant number at MIDS level two as well. And then um, in the results, we can see for each information element, the, the status um, of each, as I say, for each ele information element. So then I want to go into the case study two. And for that, um, I'm going to um, pass over to Sam Leiflang. So we're going to see another short recording um, from Sam, um, just showing the a case study of, um, taken from the DISCO work that we've just heard about as well. Hi everyone, case study two is about DISCO. I am Sam Levelang, developer on the distributed system for scientific collections, also known as DISCO. We focus on the digitization of specimen data from European collections. DISCO is currently in the development phase, but we already have included the calculation of MITS level zero, one and two in our infrastructure. For each specimen that DISCO ingests, we will calculate the MITS level as part of the process. This happens after we do the data harmonization to our open digital specimen specification, which I just gave a virtual presentation. We then have a small process which runs over the harmonized data and checks if there are values present for the fields defined in MITS. The resulting MITS level is then added as additional information to the specimen. Each time there is an update on the specimen information, we will rerun this process to see if this upgrades the MITS level as well. Just for fun, uh, we looked quickly at the metrics we have gathered in this environment. This environment contains around 2 million specimens from five different data sets. We tested uh, with different kinds of data sets from botany, zoology, geology, and paleontology, data sets supplied in the Darwin Core through Darwin Core Archives or ABCD EFG through BioCase endpoints. It's important to mention that we are continuously developing and improving the mapping, so the number shown here might change. However, if we look at the general overview, we see an average mid-level score of 0.15. 85% of the specimen only comply to mid-level zero, 
which means they only have a they have a physical specimen identifier and an organization, but they don't have enough data completeness to comply to MINS level one. Around 50% score MINS level one, and only a very small percentage of 0 0.01% complies to MINS level two, which shows that it is possible to reach the highest MINS level score um, currently available. And well done to the 262 specimen, which are already there. Still, there are a lot of specimens that don't reach mid-level one. And we ask us ourselves the question, why they don't reach this mid-level? What's missing that they don't reach mid-level one? If we look at this overview, we see that most often the object typing is missing. The object type maps roughly to Darwin core preparation or ABCD kind of unit, followed by the modified timestamp, which is lacking in a um, bit more than half the specimen we have in our test environment. License is sometimes missing. Um, we might be able to improve this a bit through an improved mapping. And specimen name is in missing in 130,000 cases. Overall, we see that uh, MITS provides us with the tool to better measure and understand the data completeness. And we can now measure the current state of our digitization and measure the impact of our digitization effort in the coming years. Super. So um, we're just going to go back to the, to the uh, main slide. Um, and just to say, I'm really keen that people um, get involved. Um, you can get involved in two ways. One is you can start um, using and implementing the MIDS um, calculations in, in particular. So we'd be particularly keen to hear from ag aggregators um, for that. That would be great. But also you can join the task group. Um, that would also be... Um, much appreciated. And um, sorry, somewhere on here, there was a, a link. So I'm just going to go through to the end. Um, in the, um, is a link here to, to be able to join and sign up to the mailing mailing list to get more information. And then finally, just the acknowledgements. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Elspeth.